All right, so I'm gonna be doing a city scene today. It's gonna be a bus at dusk on Polk Street in San Francisco. But first, let's have a tour of my flowers here. It's a beautiful day and uh, finally, because we've had a bunch of rain, so quick tour of the flowers. Geraniums are blooming, but look at my backyard. This is Oxalis and I just kind of let it go wild. Also have a birdhouse here. Nobody's nesting in it yet, but soon maybe. Along the back of the house are all roses, which are starting to bloom already. Okay, and this is lavender. I'm not sure if it's French or English. I think it might be French lavender. Smells really good. All right, as usual, I'm using my plein air easel and I've got my computer in the background. Again, I'm looking at big shapes here. Just get some key lines going. And I'm looking for proportions like on the image, comparing like this space you know, where would this line be? Would it be down like one third? And it appears like the front of the bus is kind of right in the center and it's a straight line up and down. There appears to be a vanishing point about here. So we can aim the bottom, the top of the bus, uh, the shadow, the bottom of the bus, the windows, and then even these buildings up here are going to be going to this point as well. And I'm not, you know, I'm not going to get too exact about it. It doesn't, I can just estimate, you know, going down to it. It's not like I'm getting a straight edge because I don't want that kind of, uh, I don't want it to be super tight. I want to keep it feeling loose. And when I'm holding my brush up, I'm comparing the, I'm looking at the bottom of the photo and then moving up and comparing angles. So I'm using I'm using the edge of the photograph as a guide, moving it up to determine what the angles of the windows are, etc. I'm gonna stop here and let it dry and then I can come back later and do a few touch-ups. I was going for a convincing feeling of light inside the bus. I like that sort of aqua blue um, light and then also you know the light on the sign here, headlights, these lights down the street and then also that last light in the sky. Um, I started by, I don't know if you noticed, but I started by mixing the color for the sky 
uh, because I wanted to get a really saturated blue. So I went with like a mid-tone blue and this has got like some dioxazine purple, ultramarine blue and a little bit of phthalo and white. So, and then I made it lighter as it got, you know, down towards the horizon. One of the hardest things about doing a painting like this is the drawing, especially on a small panel. So again, I just kind of focus on big shapes. The most obvious shape is the squarish front of the bus. So that was the first thing. If I can get that in place, then I can kind of build everything else around that. There were some key lines that I struck fairly early, just like determining where this sort of horizon line is. And then, you know, some, and then also the angle of these buildings. Um, and then like the side of the bus here, where did, where's the center of the bus or this corner? Where's the corner of the bus? And I kind of estimate, I'm like, oh, it's like basically in the middle. So then I came in and I, I put all the darks in using alizarin crimson and ultramarine, you know, just like I do when I do a landscape, put all those darks in. And then um, I just kind of start working from there, like working dark to light. And that's basically the process. Once I've got the whole thing covered, you know, then I can come into like, say the side of the bus and add a little bit of dark, or there's a little pop of red here, or even in the lights, in the light areas, it was like a lot brighter up at the top. And there were a few little random lights on the side. Uh, also punch up these headlights, adding the lights in the distance as well. Uh, and also like a few windows. And I did that with a small, like I think it was a number four a liner brush. There's some things I'd change. Like there was a reflection on this window here, but I'm not sure that that's not really reading as a reflection. Uh, I might tone it down and actually, you know, make, make it sort of a phthalo color. And then, uh, you know, so it's not quite so bright. Uh, the reason half of it's dark is because there's a barrier here so that the driver doesn't have all this light uh, in their eyes. Uh, there is like the Muni insignia. I always just try to suggest things like that. Also too, like this is, you know, the bus line, I think it was like 12 Polk Street. But I don't like to put text into paintings because our eyes are so drawn to it. So even when there's like numbers or text, I just suggest it because I'm not interested in what it says. I'm interested in the fact that there's light there. To me, adding like text is just an immediate um, magnet for the eye. And I don't want that. I want you to look at the whole thing and not just, and not trying to read, oh, that's a Muni bus. And it's like Polk Street line number 12. That's not what the painting is about. The painting is about the light and the light of the sign as well. There's little subtle lighting effects that you've got to pay attention to. Like, you know, the headlights uh, reflecting off of the concrete not concrete, but the asphalt, because it gets, you know, the, the streets get worn down and they get kind of shiny. There's a little bit of shine on them, even when they're dry. Uh, so you're getting some of the glow from the windows over here. And then the headlights, obviously, there's some reflection off of the street right in front of the bus. All right, so my approach to cityscape painting is kind of borrowed from two painters. Uh, I say I got my, my compositional approach from Ben Aronson. Um, and I'm not sure where he's from, but he's done a lot of San Francisco paintings. Um, and then another painter, Ken Oster, who is uh, no longer with us, but he was a California painter from Southern California, but he did a lot of San Francisco paintings. So when I first started painting San Francisco, I looked at both of them. Like I said, Ben Aronson for composition and then Ken Oster for paint application. And so Ken Oster's paint application uh, it seemed to me his approach was to kind of mop it on, a lot of energy, and then he would come in at the end with a small brush and add detail. And that's exactly how I approach my cityscapes. I try to get a lot of energy and brush work in there and then kind of tighten it up at the end, do the minimum tighten up with a small brush to pull the whole thing together. He typically painted large. He would do, you know, his cityscapes could be, he would do them quickly too. Like he'd do a 36 by 36 in a couple hours. As you guys know, I don't like to paint on small panels as much, so I don't do that as much anymore. But I am gonna be working on Patreon rewards. So basically what that is, I'm sending out um, small paintings to people that have reached a certain level with their pledges. 
Um, and like I said, there's a link down below for Patreon if you're more if you're interested in that. Uh, but this is also an opportunity for me to thank the patrons for their continued support. Just to give you an idea, uh, the Google money for this channel for this month, we call it AdSense, it is going to be about $125. That's for making videos all month. So um, it is the patrons, it's the people who support on Patreon that actually afford me the ability to do this and to continue making videos. So at the end of the month, I always like to thank them. I mean, I thank them on Patreon as well, but um, I just like to give them a public shout out and thank them for their continued support, uh, which allows me to make videos and share all this stuff with you guys. So thank you patrons and thank you guys viewers for hanging out and uh, I will see, oh yeah, put any suggestions or comments down below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Mm -hmm.